Hi, everyone. Welcome to Riot's Lunch and Learn series. My name is Caroline Griffin. I am Riot's Director of Operations, and you found us, the place where we feature all of Riot's partners. Today, I am thrilled to have Dave Sroka, Lead Software Development Engineer and Mentor Acceleration, who is also newly manager of their brand new North Carolina office here today to talk to us about rapidly setting up a POC web application to validate your ideas. Before I hand it over to Dave, just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, this session is being recorded. It will be posted to Riot's YouTube channel and then shared out via the meetup group where you registered for this event. Um, if you do have any questions, please put those in the chat box throughout the presentation. Um, we're gonna make this a pretty interactive demonstration. You can probably see that, that Dave already has some demos lined up for y'all. So um, he will be taking questions throughout the presentation, which is fantastic. And then the best way to view this presentation is in speaker view. That'll give you a nice big view of Dave's presentation and his demo, and then a smaller view of him on the right. But without further ado, I will hand it over to Dave. Thank you so much for being with us today, y'all. Absolutely. And thank you all for coming out and well, coming to Zoom, I guess, not out. Um, there's a great introduction, so I don't really want to spend too much time talking about this, but I just want to just kind of where I'm coming from. I've been doing this for a long time. And actually, let's just go ahead and live update these slides. I keep forgetting to do that. 18 years now, I guess. Uh, I've been all around the block. I'm one of the a, a unique people that I've both founded startups, have been a part of startups that are in progress, and also worked at large enterprise clients like, uh, or our enterprise companies like RTI International here in, uh, in Raleigh, Cisco, and places like that. So I've kind of seen it all, uh, which is really nice. I've done most of the things that uh, I've, I've done a lot of things that I, I don't wish upon other people. So I like to kind of, uh, in terms of what I do, uh, when I come out to these things is I love sharing knowledge and I love kind of talking about stuff um, and really kind of, we like to kind of demystify tech a little bit. So um, Acceleration, we're a client services company, but the kind of interesting thing that we do, and uh, we have a, a pretty good, interesting teaching core philosophy, we actually use um, co-op and intern student talent to do our client services solutions. And so we get them involved uh, right from the get-go doing actual work. Um, so it's really nice. It kind of keeps us fresh uh, in terms of growing, of teaching and learning and growing. Um, it, they, they bring fresh energy all the time. And it's a, it's a pretty great model. So uh, that's what we do. But we're a, it's our heart, a client services company. And our other half of our company called Next Up Solution does agile training. Um, so if you're ever looking for anything like that, that's kind of what we do. Um, it makes us a, oh, at, our, at our core a very fast company uh, and things like that. So today I'm here to kind of talk about um, rapid prototyping essentially. And really what, what can you do um, to, to kind of get quickly to uh, validating your ideas? Why is it important? Um, a, large, a large part of the content today is going to be, um, I'm actually gonna dive into a startup, a web app um, from the ground up. Uh, to try and basically get some ideas out of there. It's going to be a, a pretty pretty basic and concise, um, but it's kind of tied into some concepts you can use when you have an idea, even if you don't have a lot of uh, necessarily web knowledge uh, or, or knowledge of the, the, the medium you're working in, you can, you can get in quickly, make some quick concessions, and actually validate yourself surprisingly quickly. Um, now, I know like with Riot, a lot of times there's... Um, with, with IoT solutions, a lot of times there is a little gap between having the technical knowledge of having an IoT solution and then connecting that to the web. Um, that's a lot of the conversations we have, but I'll, I'll try and tie that together and give you at least some confidence in terms of diving into web concepts your, yourself, or at least kind of show you a little bit how easy it can be to kind of dive in and play around with it. Um, so why, uh, why is rapid prototyping good? Uh, or why is that an important concept to, to, um, to sort of center your philosophy around? Um, the, the key thing, and I feel like Silicon Valley has kind of warped it a little bit, but the key thing to really building out a product or building out anything is to get something up and running so you can play with it and iterate. And Silicon Valley has worked to, to fa fail fast, um, the sort of met that methodology of just throwing something out there. Um, what's more important is to validate fast um, and to, to get something that you can kind of 
see your ideas, get to a pretty good level of, of understanding, but really get it out there and play. So you want to validate things like your data models if you're working on a web app or just it, it, quickly if you're doing an, an internet of things or some sort of, of, of physical product, you want to get that in the hands of people to use it so you can catch all the, the, the things that maybe you didn't think about. Is you can only plan and, and, th and, and consider and, and think tank as much as possible, but you really have to get some feedback passed away. So playing with your ideas, uh, again, getting feedback and iterating is the heart of both software engineering, but it's really the heart of, heart of product development. And it's kind of the heart of anything that you do of developing an idea is you want to get that out in front of people as, as fast as possible. You want to reduce that barrier to um, you're not creating a like special snowflake precious thing. You're creating a, um, a, a, you know, a stone that you're polishing. Um, and if you think about it that way, getting something out and starting that process as fast as possible is the key to really getting the best out of any step of the process without spending a lot of time going down the wrong path. So there's more of just a little bit of soapboxing in case you're not coming in like, yes, I really want a rapid prototype or I want to get out there. Uh, definitely take as much time as you can to, to plan, but start working as soon as you can as well. Um, so I'm going to set up a little bit of a theoretical situation here. Um, and let's say uh, my concept, uh, I've got a, I've got a startup, and our startup is, uh, this is actually not, not too far off from some, uh, some of the stuff that we've, we've been, been in talks of in the past, um, where, let's say I'm a, uh, I'm a chemical, I mean, a, 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 a chemical testing company, a sort of, a, a, you know, a health, health company that needs to rapidly create some experiments, monitor these, this sort of farm of devices, and kind of keep an eye on uh, tabs on things. So let's kind of say we've got. As a setup, we've got a series of, of experiment tanks, and they have some some sort of qualities. So let's let's see. Um, we're gonna we've got some tanks, and we've got some. They've got sensors. They've got temperatures. They've got things you can do with them. You can fill them up. You can do all sorts of stuff. But I don't have any of that done. I don't have any. I don't have an API. Um, let's just make a let's make a help a helpful criteria that we do have the server farm and we have enabled that uh, or that uh, to that experiment farm and through various mechanisms, which is actually, which is not too hard to, to, to set up uh, actually with say like Arduino devices or anything like that to prototype. We've got our, a nice little basic server that actually reports some statistics to us that we can, we can look at. Um, but what we'll do is we, we know those conditions. We don't need any of that. We're going to kind of make it up. Um, so here I have this basic, this is an empty, empty project. I've just kind of seeded it with some, some basic stuff. Uh, and to get started um, here, so going from, from nothing, I'm going to use um, a lot of tooling from front-end development that, that simplify things. Um, feel free to ask questions if I'm doing something that you maybe don't understand. I'm not quite sure in terms of the, the skill level of if I'm talking with a bunch of web developers or a bunch of folks who just want to kind of know more about it. Um, so feel free to pop in the chat if you want to know something, uh, if you want me to clarify something that I throw out there. Um, I'll try and define as I go to a light level, but if you're ever curious, feel free to pop in the chat, ask a question, um, and we'll stop and kind of define things so they don't run off too far um, into um, territory that you're kind of like, I'm lost, um, and, I, and I definitely don't want anybody to feel that way. So, um, but I'm going to dive in here. Um, I've got just this basic project set up. Um, you can see I've got I've got a couple of web browser windows, but nothing's running here. Not much going on. Um, so I want to start with um, I'm just going to add in. Let's see. I'm going to add in my nice a package. This is something that I like to use, and this is kind of the key of your when you're starting up an API. You can easily fall down too far down into trying to create a robust solution too fast. But what I found is is getting just anything up and running to validate it. A tool I've used in the, in the past. Um, if I and I come at this with a couple different approaches. Do I want to get an API, just a basic API set up? Um, I'll kind of use this tool. It's called JSON Server. Um, it's a nice little NPM package. Um, you can install it through through uh, NPM, uh, do it with web tools. That sets you up a little a little server. And what you can do is set up a nice little JSON file. It's really simple. That all right. So I was talking about, I've got a couple of different things going on there. I've got some, some tanks. Um, so let's say, you know, I've just, and I'm just going to define sort of this use case that I talk about and, and give myself um, some stuff. I'm going to give myself something, something to play with here. Um, so let's see. Uh, what do I have here? I think my tanks probably have a name. Uh, so I'm going to make one that's, uh, we're going to be real creative here. It's going to go tank one. Super great. Um, what else? My, my, I know that my, my tanks are going to have uh, an amount. 
um, and let's just say this is some unit that we know makes sense. And it's also got a temperature. Um, I know these kind of things that we're tweaking. Um, I keep them at about 75 degrees. So I've got, that's one. We're just gonna kind of stub out here with Jason. And this is nothing that's co more complicated than just a series of values. Um, and we'll call, I got tank point two. And thanks for it. got a couple of things. This one's got 75% and this one's 50%. 70, let's just vary these a little bit to make it more realistic. There's gonna be some varied data. So cool. Um, so I kind of define those cases that I talked about um, previously. Uh, so with this nice tool that I have, when I installed, um, but it's going to create really quickly here in this. I'm going to create a start and start is just going to be um, JSON server is the name of the package and it's going to start it up with that db.json that I just created. So this package actually takes that JSON and actually turns it into you automatically. It does a little magic. At its heart, it's just an express server, um, which if you're familiar with JavaScript, it's a, it's a pretty standard, pretty simple um, web server um, using, using Node, um, which is based in JavaScript. So it's going to take this in. It's going to read in this db.json, and it is going to um, turn that into a, a fully um, a, rest, a restful server that has full CRUD operations for you out of the box. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and watch that. So. I'm going to use, I'm using yarn, which is another a tool similar to NPM. Oops, but I can't type. All right. So right off the bat here, I've used this in, in the kind of the key thing here. I know I've, I've kind of thrown out a lot of technical things, but the key takeaway from, for me is when you're, when you're prototyping anything, find the, you can find a lot of tools that will accelerate this. Now, JSON server is not production ready, right? I'm using a tool that's not going to take me all the way. Um, but the key is I've invested almost nothing um, in the time. I've spent more time talking about this than actually setting up. It's a few keystrokes and it gets me up and running to something that I can validate. I can open up this server in here. And this is actually a, a full API um, that I can hit if I use a tool that I had that I use called um, PAW um, or you can use Insomnia or whatever. It's an API, you can hit it like a standard API and it's got everything you wanna need. You have, you have all the verbs, you can get, put, um, post, you can update stuff and you can do this um, in real time. And then if you ever wanna, uh, Add some more data. I can just live update this. It's going to watch. It's watching this. So that's what I, I had that flag to watch. The server is going to restart. I can add more data anytime I want. I want tank four and then cool. Live updated. Reset it over here. Great. So cool. Uh, I've, I've wasted no time. I've gotten something. I found a tool that helped me accelerate that. I know the limitations of this tool. So I know that I'm not going to be going too far down a rabbit hole, but I have made something that's really similar similar to what, what I'll be using if I when I set up a, a real API. So I can migrate to the real API or any other kind of thing once I'm ready. But now when I start writing some front end code, I'm writing real code. Okay, cool. So I've got this API. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, the other th another thing that I like to do is I'm gonna open up another terminal window terminal window. And I am going to grab a similar tool. I need a front end. Um, I work in Re React a lot. And one of the things that a couple of years ago that the React community, com community created um, was create React app is what it's called. Um, so I'm going to use, and actually one of the other things that I like about JSON server, well, we won't, it, it's, that's too much in the weeds. It actually also gives you the whole, I can get the, all the, the database if I have any other objects. Uh, one thing that I'm going to take just a quick second, and I'm going to make this a little bit more robust. Um, let's, I mean, let's actually let's save that just in case if we have time. I'll kind of come back to that. We've got four tanks. Four tanks is a pretty good simulation. My farm has seven, but that's that's a minor um, kind of nuance. So, what I'm going to do here now. So as I'm starting to mention, create React app. It's just a, basically a tool chain. It's like any other technical solution. You'll always get you always get some sort of generator function that you, that will help you scaffold out a a a, a, a tool uh, whatever you're doing. Um, so this create React app is just gonna. I'm going to use this tool to create a really quick web front end for me to use. 
Um, so it's going to take this just a second, pull this down from NPM and get you kind of up and running. Um, so again, this is all kind of the, the learning process. These are tools that I like to use and actually create React app is the, uh, the opposite of what JSON server is. Create React app actually gives you a full robust application you can take to production um, and build out a fully capable production site. So this is a, actually a nice tool that you can, you're not really making too many concessions. The things that you're doing is there's a lot of opinions in Create React app, but you can easily avoid those. So again, the kind of pattern is like make a concession, find a tool that gets you as fast as possible um, to do it, whether that's a web tool or that's any kind of other thing. Understand your concessions that you're making and then come, to, come out with a plan of how you're going to navigate to move from those anything that's not production ready in that concession how you're gonna get from there to your delivery. And as long as you're thinking about that stuff and making being clear that and you're not wasting time on the concessions, you're in pretty good shape. What you don't wanna do is take make a thing that's going to cost you a lot of time, make a choice that's going to cost you a lot of time to implement the wrong solution. At that point, you might wanna take a second and actually invest in the correct solution. So, all right. So I have gotten this web front end set up. We're just gonna go in here and right away, um, with just a couple of command line tools. And it's yelling at me because it's the uh, JSON server runs on the same port. Fortunately, Create React app handles that well. Um, so here we go. We've got this. This is basic, basic React app um, set up right away with, again, not a lot of uh, work needing to be done. And I can start just building out something like a, I can just start doing whatever I want. I ignite it. I want to, don't want to learn it. I'm going to add this. Hey, great. We've updated it. Hey, we can do some actual development. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna start writing some code. What do I wanna, what do I wanna list out here? I wanna get a, I wanna get a list of these tanks. I wanna kind of interact with them in some way um, and really both get some information. I wanna see this information that this other, um, this that our, that our that our experiment farm has produced, and so like I said, we're we're making a presupposition that we've enabled those to be have some sort of web reporting in some fashion. They're calling out. Let's say, let's say they're calling out to our API that we've that we will be making at some point. They'll be calling it out, and we'll we'll deliver this information. So this information is going to be, let's say, a simulacrum of live reported information about what's going on, and we'll be able to interact with those. Okay, those are kind of like just assumptions we've made to get to a, a place where we can see what we're doing. So what I need to, what I want to do is I want to have a long list of what, both what's going on with our, um, with our, with our farm and what is, uh, what we can, you know, and then also enable us to, to interact with it. So I'm going to clear out most of actually all of this placeholder stuff. We'll get rid of that. And I'm going to start writing out um, a couple of things I want to put in here to have, to have access to. Um, I'm going to add a front end tool chain that I use sometimes called Bulma. Uh, essentially it's just analysis. If you've heard of bootstrap or anything else, they're just, again, another thing that make a concession to give me some CSS classes that'll make it look a little bit better and group things a little bit better without me having to do a lot of work. Um, so I'll add that in there. Um, and I'll also add, uh, that's all I'll add. Yeah, I don't need anything else right now. I'm just kind of comparing with, you never want to live code. So I've already done this, spoilers. Um, I'm gonna take a second here. Yeah, make sure I don't get myself into too big of a hole. So one of the things we'll use the semantic HTML. So I'm just gonna write out uh, in, in React, if you have a, what, what we're looking at here with React is they bake in HTML inside here, but that's hard. We're just writing some HTML content and then we're gonna write our own components here and just really get something up really quick. So I'm gonna say, um, this is just going to be presentational code. Um, I'm put these in a container, and I'm going to say, uh, let's see. I'm going to make my take manager. And I'm going to take that. So you can see on the left here, we're already getting some rapid feedback uh, on the code we're writing. Um, And I'm going to keep going with this, just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. I'm going to keep going with this. Let's see what else. Um, I'm going to write, just give me some, some stuff to work with if I want to at some point. Put some placeholder in there. Um, great. That looks pretty good. So, okay, that's fine. We got a header. Great. Um, what do I want? I want a list of 
tanks. So, uh, you know, right here, we're just gonna list them all out. So I would do that. I'm gonna create a new list here. And for writing React code, this again, this is this is this is all based in React. But the kind of the key of this, the reason I'm using React is not because React is great. Uh, React is is great, but it's what I'm most comfortable with. So I've chosen that uh, because I'm really comfortable with it, and I can get stuff out really quickly. A lot of people are more comfortable with um, if we're talking software engineering, you, the person may be better writing raw JavaScript. That's a super great way to get a rapid prototype out. You don't need to invest in any sort of like framework or anything. The key here is doing what you're comfortable with, and you can bang it out really quickly. And you can always rewrite as long as you're not making bad um, software engineering choices. You can always rewrite. Um, code later to change frameworks around, or once you've proven these these um, uh, concepts, you can you can rewrite this pretty easily. So I've got some some here some text generators that are just basically gonna make this a little easier for me to write um, some code. And actually, I don't even let's see, we're gonna change this. This is tanks. It's a component, and I'm just gonna list. Let's say, let's do, I make three. So this is just gonna be placeholder text. That's really gonna give me, as I'm going through, I'm gonna validate, I've got a list, it renders it. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna change the name, export that. So what I can do here now is, I'm just gonna render tanks, my list of tanks that I made. All right, great. We've got this looks like Garbo right now, but I don't care because I really just wanted to get that going. So now I know that anything, and with, as I wanna update this, again, getting to a rapid feedback place, there we go. Getting to rapid feedback, I can add whatever text I want there if I, Go. Take a second for the server update, and I can update this as I go, which is which is great. That's what we want. So I'm gonna take a pause. Um, right now, I've just made up some stuff. This is just front end code. It's not actually connected to anything. Um, this is gonna get to a lot of pattern choices that I get as I'm writing these out. But as I've as I've done things, I always end up. Um, creating what's what I call services. This kind of is a similar thing to what a framework does with Angular. Um, and I create services for everything I want to do. And so I will always, the first thing I create when I'm when I'm working with anything actually at this point is I'll create something called API.service. And then I'll set, I'll start writing this out. So I know I'm going to have a, um, always have a root URL. I don't know what that is. I always kind of start this way. And I actually have, when I'm not doing this live, I actually have a whole um, personal repository that I use that just kind of generates this, this stuff out because it's all very rote. I do the same thing every single time. And again, when I'm trying to get something out the door really quickly, I go on these patterns that I've vetted tons and tons of time and I just kind of go with it. And I have identified at this point, again, that this is kind of just like with when you're doing just about anything, I've captured all of these things, these patterns and things that I've done a bunch of times into a sort of repeatable framework to help me accelerate when I do a prototype. Um, and so again, for, for anybody, when you're doing that, that's actually the kind of flip side of the equation that has all been prior work is that I have taken the time to develop these um, over time. And the first time I ever did it, I actually took the time to write out the notes and capture the things I didn't know about and have filled in those are gaps. So that's kind of the flip side of, of making yourself able to rapidly prototype is just capturing all those tools for whatever it is you're trying to do, know how to do it and, and reducing the cognitive load as much as you can so that you can get quickly to the whatever the special unique core of the product is. And especially almost always with a web app, the core product is not this web app. Almost, it's almost never the core product it is what does your web app do for your customer or your person? And then it's the same thing with, pro with any sort of product. What, is, what, what problem does this solve? Let's get to that. It's not the web app. The web app is that there's a billion web apps. You have web apps. Um, we're not solving anything with that. So, um, so I'm going to build out this API service class. It's literally just going to do all of my... Um, uh, my, the talking to the server. So I'm going to start with, um, what do I want? I need to get those, those tanks. Yeah. So I'm going to really just make a function. I'll get tanks. And what that's going to do is it's going to, going to get this, uh, fetch is just built in, uh, browser API. 
that will get um, from my root URL. That's why I set that as a, as a variable. I don't need to know what that is right now. I know that I'm going to get from my root URL. Um, I know that I set up that API server. And so my root URL, because I'm working here, um, I'm going to set that. I know that is. Right on 3000. Yeah. And let's just validate real quick. Wherever my local is 3000 slash thanks, not thanks, tanks. Right. That's the valid URL. And that's what's going to get generated here. Okay. Great. I'm just going to return to this function. Hey, okay, response. Cool. Uh, 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 and it, see, I made a typo. What did I do wrong? Who knows? This is why you don't live code. Oh, that's because I did not make it. Async. This is just telling me it. Async functions. Rather than write it, let's just copy and paste it. There we go. Cool. That's go to the base form of it. As you're getting my tanks, that's the thing we've already validated here. We've, we're going to do a get request to this this port on tanks. Let's get this let's get this wired in a little bit better so that we're not making up a whole lot of stuff. And we're actually doing something that's a little more analogous to um, to real life. So first thing, missing step that I forgot. I'm going to import this CS library that I mentioned called Bulma, just so that it'll pull that as in. And got our tanks here. Great. And I'm going to go back and now we're going to wire up tanks. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, let's do some more here. This is pretty basic. We need more stuff here. So we're going to get constructor here, which is a general problem we're going to set with React. They have the concept of, of a state. I'm going to set up some state that says, here's our state. There's no tanks. Cool. That's going to give me option. Yeah, so later, I'll be able to pull that from the state. And I'm also going to create, uh, we'll come back to this, actually. We're going to create, um, Hmm, what's, what's the best thing to do next? I'm gonna try and get, I wanna try and get in, in terms of, of making this, getting something that's repeatable, gets me moving fast. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and start next. This is kind of a, let's go ahead. We've, we've set up that um, we, have, we have tanks. I've initialized that thanks to the magic of React. Um, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to take that tanks, what's coming back from that map. And we're going to spit back a new component called tank super. And that's just going to render this tank information. Well. What do we need for that? Um, React makes sure, make sure I have to have some sort of unique ID on these repeating elements. So I'm going to take that tank.id because that's going to be unique for us. And I'm just going to just going to go ahead and pass this whole tank in there. I know I'm going to need all of that. OK, cool. React gives us some life cycle methods. So I'm going to say component did mount. That says that it gets fired when the component is mounted and the the uh, in sort of the uh, into this area into our DOM. Um, you can see it's yelling at me because I'm not done with code. Um, so I'm gonna say get tanks. I just wrote that get tanks function. Great, because I'm using an, an asynchronous function. Let's make let's do that. So when my components mount, it's gonna go get tanks and it's gonna say. When it gets the tanks, it's going to set. Oops. 
just going to set that on the state, which is just some behind the scenes magic with React that will up, it'll, it'll re-render this whole thing when it updates that state. Um, so I made some, some typos as we get in there. So I'm just going to there we go okay so as you can see i have not written tank yet so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now so my goal with all of this this is none of this is necessarily important but my goal is to kind of show even with something as complicated as a web app that may seem kind of you know it may seem like a lot you can very quickly make some choices quickly empower yourself to do that and just really kind of start banging out um just kind of move with it as fast as you can and start banging out something that really that helps you to kind of see what you get so let's finish up this let's take this to completion so we can really kind of get to the meat of what do we want? Just to kind of save ourselves some time. Let's see. I'm gonna kind of gonna cheat a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of just, I'm really just gonna take this tank component that I wrote earlier. And you'll see that there's a couple of extra things that I identified over the course of writing this tank component. And again, this is where, and it's a little bit like writing prose. And in outlining, uh, and as you can kind of see, I'm kind of doing an outline. I said, I'm going to need a tank. I don't know what that's going to be. Let me just say, I need a tank, outline it out, and I'll fill in the blanks later. Uh, so it's a little bit like kind of writing a novel where you can't, you can't decide, you, you don't start at the beginning and say, well, I'm writing section one now, now I'm writing section two. You kind of come at it as you know information and you work on where the, the level of resolution that you have in terms of the story that you're telling. Um, so when you're writing UI or writing or doing anything, you're telling a story. Um, and you're filling in those gaps. So as I was writing this out, I kind of discovered that like, I want to have some ways to interact with this tank as well. So I wanted to, I want to be able to fill it. I want to be able to empty it uh, and change those amounts. And I also want to be able to heat it up. Um, those are kind of some kind of things that I kind of decided that we, we wanted to do. Um, and I did not, do, 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 do. why isn't it like temp? Well, we'll figure that out. Um, let me just go ahead and go in here. Oh, because I called it temp and not, I called it temperature. See, there we go. Yeah, and then we'll just to kind of verify against that. Yep, temperature and temperature, great. Okay. And then we'll just kind of go from here. I'll just kind of copy all of my functions that I already wrote, just because it takes a little longer than the course of an hour to really kind of bang this out. And you have to, you have to kind of go through the process of iterating. And these were generated over the course of this iteration cycle. Um, I created these functions earlier. We don't have these, but that's okay. I, I'm going to say, I know that I'm going to have something like that. And then we'll wire these up. So let's go ahead and make this first. Um, we'll kind of go in here. And these are really just a function of doing some updates. And again, because I don't want to spend so much time actually making you watch me write code, I'm going to take what I've already written here as well. I'm going to copy out. I wrote a lot of other helpful functions. So in order to do all these other updates, I needed a, I needed to be able to update that. So I wrote some methods to, to interface with this inter, this thing. But as you can see, it's pretty lightweight code, and I've extended those those functions to do specific things. Um, so I've kind of worked on that, and now I will be able to pull these in here. I'll just import those quickly, and. Great. Now I'll fix my typos and we'll just actually, again, just in the interest of time, I'm gonna take this slightly different code that I wrote earlier. Perfect. Okay. 
let's try it. Let's make sure you can restart that. Let's see what I did. Software engineering. Um, while I'm kind of fixing this issue, are there any questions or uh, comments or anything as we have a, a halfway through here? Um, or anything that I can kind of touch on uh, at this point in the... Dave, I'm not seeing any in the chat box, but please, if anybody feels more comfortable unmuting themselves, you are more than welcome to do that. I think we're all good now. Awesome. I love it. Um, cool. Oh, uh, 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 uh. that's because I accidentally, I'm not using TypeScript here. As you so you can tell here, I uh, actually, one of the things that helps me even faster um, rapid write is I use TypeScript on all my projects as well, which has an extra level of catching errors for you. Ta -da. Okay, sweet. But I'm not using it here. All right. So let's see why. Again, this is why you don't ever want to do live code. I don't know why. I keep... All right. Yeah, perfect. All right. There we go. Made a typo somewhere in there. Okay, great. So now, now that I've got that actually wired up to the API, using that data and all that the the code that I wrote, and I know I cheated a little bit by copying and pasting, but in terms of like the dry run through, it took me about an hour and a half to run through that and solve all the problems. Um, so I was really quickly able to get up something here. And with all that, we have these little components that I can actually play around with. And again, this is a basic use case, but as you kind of develop more complicated functionality, the, the way to get it into this sort of prototype actually doesn't change um, a whole lot, uh, just what it is. So the simplified use case, um, while it is um, while it is simple, it does, it's pretty much kind of how how it goes. Um, let me fix this real quick. I I used the uh, I changed it temp. I changed that to temperature in my data. There we go. So I can fill it. I can empty it. I can not have that validated because it's not working. <laughs> so. The core concept still kind of stands, at least. Um, so, like I said, the re in real time, it took about an hour and a half. But now here I am. I have this data represented in our real real time feedback uh, situation. You can, with a little bit of extra code, you can get real time polling, or you can just set it up to just keep pulling that data. Pretty simple. And actually, watch this data come in. Um, and for a purpose of like, if you just have a a prototype farm set up, honestly, you can do a whole lot with, with just that amount of work. Um, the, the missing pieces for going from prototype to live code in this particular instance is this API is not ready to go. Um, what we've been able to kind of, to get, to vet, to get out of this is a data model. Um, so let's say, let's just hypothetically, let's run this out to how I would take this from here. Um, I would spin up a new, um, I would probably use personally.net. Um, it, it just to set up, I would set up that, that um, new robust API. But right now I have, um, and let's just say like, I've kind of, I, uh, through the course of this, I've actually kind of identified, I've got, actually I got users as well. Um, I've got a user, uh, the list of users. We figured out what, let's just say, I'm just, now it's just gonna make some, I mean, a user is gonna have, everything's gonna have an ID. Uh, then user's gonna have a name, sure. Right, and that's okay, I know I have users, I know what they need to look like. Just get rid of the squigglies. 
Um, I know I've got, you know, what else I've got, you know, I've got different locations. I've got, you know, whatever you want is you've identified to the course of this, this iteration, you can take this data model and start writing that out on whatever specific um, uh, framework or anything that you want, or even just a raw, just app, you can start writing this out and you've reduced the amount of decisions you have to make um, in a real world testing environment. You have found that I, that you, you need to see, you know what, we really want to see, um, I really want tanks to have an extra bit of, of information here. Um, so, you know, I want tanks to also have um, location that links up with a location ID that I just was saying, oh, we have locations. Okay, great. So now I feel that, and, and JSON server and any framework makes this, makes this really easy as well. So I can link um, some locations together um, and say, you know, location links to location ID one. So that tank is in location one. Um, and kind of expand that out and and render that out there. And so you can kind of you can wh why this is powerful. You can you can really get in a real world sense. You don't need to know everything before you get started. Uh, you can decide later and start rapidly iterating on this. And then because I've changed that here, this should update here. And this is where the power of this particular tool gets me everything. And list it out here and you can kind of see that now I have this data to work with and let's just kind of take it back over here, even though my buttons don't work. Um, for right now, because I don't have all the pieces. We'll just show the the ID um, I need to I need to add up some extra extra code where I would need to pull from the. Um, uh, pull the extra locations as well and link those up. Uh, again, not too bad. I'm trying to talk and write at the same time. Um, let's see, location. That's just great. So we'll go back over here. There you go. And, and I was like, oops, I mistyped it. Location. Location one, the rest don't have anything. Let's just give this some. Let's see if I can get their value. I'm not gonna bother getting these functions work to update this in real time, uh, because I don't think that really shows too much. Um, but like I said, the core key concept is whether, whether or not um, Using this web app, which is this is pretty simple. This is again using pretty pretty robust toolchain. And in terms of React, I have actually a fully featured um, React app at this point, point. Um, and it doesn't do a whole lot, but it can. And if I wanted to take this production, I could build it right now um, as a production app. I have a little lot of a uh, of placeholder type testing that I could set up if I wanted to set up unit testing. That's ready to go. Uh, I have reporting, and I have a lot of other uh, modern. Uh, abilities like uh, setting up service workers, uh, which is uh, the key to uh, sort of a modern uh, um, web web enabled app. Um, so we have all those pieces from that front end. So we've kind of, it, this has been a front end first um, iteration. And now when I need to actually go, I would pause once I've gotten to a pretty, I feel pretty comfortable if I felt, let's, let's say I have validated, this is a pretty good, this gets me all I need. Um, and I want to talk with somebody about creating an API. Like I've actually, this doesn't require a whole lot of actual web development knowledge to work on. On I think most people could can do this. You can send this off and say, "Hey, here's what I've developed as sort of a data model," and you can send this to an actual to an engineering shop, and they would be able to turn this into a robust, scalable app very easily, um, as opposed to trying to understand all your use cases because you've done a lot of good work up front to try and help enable that. So that's going to be a powerful tool, and you've you've used this. Um, again, sort of, sort of relatively. I know I flew through a lot of the the kind of key pieces of actually working with it, but in terms of the actual knowledge that you need to understand, it's relatively um, low level. That actually any of most of our students um, at a, at a, can can kind of grip onto this, um, and they're also able to to iterate on on all these things. So. Um, I hope that I can accomplish a couple of different things and hopefully help you see. The web development is not so great, not so tough, but also kind of given a few sort of core philosophies um, 
as you think about getting fast to build. Um, and one of that is uh, the, the kind of three things I can I break it down to uh, would be number one, don't make, don't make choices that are gonna invest you too, too much time into something that's not gonna be scalable, but don't be afraid to make concessions if it's quick to get it going to get you moving fast. Um, the second kind of key thing is iterate, 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 um, and, and make choices that get you to seeing something fast. Um, and I guess I didn't really have a third one. I'm not sure why I said three, except that uh, that's what I always come with. So, um, sweet. Well, last kind of thing, um, let's see, I'm gonna pull up, just take a, take a breath from here. I'm gonna kind of look over to the chat and see how many people we have kind of chillax in here. And I'm sort of curious, since we have a little extra time, if anyone wants to speak out, I'm curious what, what brings y'all to the talk, like what drew you in, um, if anybody's for, willing to, to step in. Tim Wright, I know you've been here since the very beginning. So you yeah, must... don't be shy, everybody. <laughs> very hey, shy group. Yep. Hey, Christopher, yes. Hey, yeah, so um, actually I've been uh, working as a, scientist in uh, pharma in QC for the past eight years nice. and uh, decided to make the move to change over to tech. And uh, I'm just kind of finishing up. We're actually kind of in the middle of a fellowship program right now and uh, just saw this and I'm trying to get as much information as I can. I know. love that. That's super that's, great. That's why I'm here. And um, I think you did a great job. <laughs> and I've, you know, I've done tons of presentations and I know how it goes. Um, just last week, I was doing a presentation on an app I made that was working flawlessly. And as soon as I brought it up to try to do something with it, something went wrong. And I was like, oh, this is great. So anyway, yeah, thank you. I appreciate this. Well, no problem. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, super good. And actually, like, there's a lot of applications to, 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 to merge those two things <laughs> between pharma and the uh, and web technology, but, but yeah, like, uh, honestly, like in, in terms of these, these principles, they all kind of come from the heart of like, that's what, so, what's, a, this is what software engineering is at its heart is getting something quickly to market. So certainly take, take those, uh, take those things with you as you, as you kind of develop. Uh, good stuff. Well, th I appreciate you sharing that Christopher. Thanks good, and good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. I All think right. that's it, Dave. Thanks for sharing, Christopher. Yeah, I love that. Uh, honestly, like that's kind of like I mean, I love putting these uh, these talks out there and discussions. But I always love to hear, especially with with Raya and the, the the audiences that you draw. I love to hear like everyone's individual story of what they're what they're trying to get out of all this. So I, I will add, um, hi, Dave, Angela Harris here. Hey, Angela. Good to see you. Likewise. So as a visionary and project manager, I actually just wanted to see, I wanted to visualize what goes on behind the scenes from the lens of the software development team. So I appreciate the snapshot, <laughs> excuse me, and this opportunity to really see what goes on behind the scenes in this sort of 40 minute time slot. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, and as you can see, like I, you know, cut a few corners in terms of having pre pre built content, but honestly, like this is the probably the most accurate representation of the process in general, even in terms of stuff that, stuff that doesn't necessarily go go right. And, and that's okay. Um, that's kind of all part of the process. But um, Hopefully I could give you a little bit of insight. Yeah, so it's kind of a, it's like a condensed, but only like 50% condensed um, in terms of my personal process, um, for sure. But yeah, no, I, I love, uh, I love giving insight into that process. Uh, Cause it's not, 
It's, but it's a, the process of software engineering, at least for me, is not anything than any different than any other. I, I actually call myself like a, a code gardener most of the time. If you actually ask me to put like a, a, a sort of like a metaphor around it, because it, it's very similar to that, where you're you're laying the groundwork, you're doing a lot of just like rote processes of the same, and it's not elegant and it's not glamorous. Um, and you're doing stuff and trying to lay the groundwork for like fertile growth in the future. But you always have to do weeding. You have to do you know figure out something that that didn't get laid right and kind of put it. And if you come in expect profession perfection or thinking that way it, it, it can lead you well down the wrong path so um, software engineering is definitely a messy um, inelegant art a lot of times thanks for sharing Angela yes thank you any last thoughts before we wrap up I will say Dave and his team are amazing. If you are local to the North Carolina area, I'm sure they would, they have some, um, maybe some launch events coming up, Dave, with your new space. We do. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what the best place to do that is. Um, we may, we'll probably do it sometime over the summer when we have our summer cohort coming in, our summer uh, application of systems. So we'll, we'll have that defined. Um, was that best? Uh, yeah, we don't, we need it. I think we have a mailing list uh, on our website. We'll find out about that. But um, we will share, share that with y'all, Riot, um, to share out with everybody. Actually, so I'll I'll also share it on the Riot Slack when that comes up. Um, so that'll be kind of the best way to stay in touch. But yeah, we're gonna have we are gonna have an event coming, meet and greet in the space and party. So feel free to come out and see us. What we're all about. Amazing. Yeah, it's fun. We'll share that out broadly. Perfect. Yeah. It'll be a broad invite, but we still have to, we're, it's TBD on when we're actually going to do that. Stay tuned, everyone. Right. Sounds like summer 2022. <laughs> well, we wanted to make sure we, we wanted to do our hiring to see how many students we would end up with, make sure we had some, and we just finished that hiring. So now we have those students. Now it's not just me and uh, my compatriot, <laughs> my one other full-time compatriot. <laughs> Come meet the two of us in our <laughs> office. <laughs> The, the fun thing about what's that well dave i said we're looking forward to it yeah i'll be well, there for sure. that'll be super fun that's right well dave what? thank you so much thank you for everyone who stuck around to the end um as a reminder this was uh recorded i'll let dave wrap up but uh you will be able to find this recording on riot's youtube channel and i'll see you at the next lunch learn but dave i'll hand it over to you for closing thoughts Thanks. Yeah, no, I appreciate all your time. And I'm so glad you guys you, that you came out and hello. And thank you to all the people who watch this uh, online in the future. Um, for just for us, we have, like I said, my name's Dave, I'm from Acceleration. Um, and you can check us out here at acceleration.com. You can email me personally at dave.sroka. I thought, uh, I need to put that in the slide. Well, uh, I think it's on the invite list at acceleration.com. You can also, we have a contact us on the website and a lot of things if you want to talk. Um, we also, we always love talking. We do not only just um, solutions, but we are always kind of happy to just chat. Um, we often give advice um, and our door is pretty much open, especially for startup founders or small companies who are just like, I don't really know what to do next or like, one of the things that we, we we do a lot with is just a quick little assessment or kind of jump in and just chat it out and see where you're at, see how you get to the next step, see if we can help out in any way. And even if not, um, we're kind of happy to help give you a little bit of guidance or help give you some support and motivation um, and things like that. So feel free to hit us up, even if it's just to say hi. Uh, and I am on the Riot Slack too, um, if, you, if, you, uh, if you look for me. So I'd love to hear from anybody, um, even if it's just ask some technical questions. Thanks so much, Dave. And I did put your email in the chat box. So that is there. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and um, happy Easter. That's your thing. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Right. Take care, everybody.